Zdravo! Dobro došli na naš kanal. Greetings and welcome to our channel. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Frances, Draghi's wife. And for those of you who've seen me before, thank you very much for all your positive feedback. And for those of you who have not, please subscribe to our channel and follow us. And um, last time I talked a little bit about the Serbian bureaucracy we um, encountered um, trying to get our crate that we'd had shipped from America. And from that experience, I just um, wanted to add that it is really important that if you're going to ship something to contact the Serbian embassy in America or whatever country many months before you ship it. In our case, nevertheless, we still got the crate and it was a happy ending. But I thought maybe today I would share with you a few more of the issues that um, have made this adventure a little less than easy. And um, just want to say, please watch to the end as I am saving what I considered to be the worst for the last. Well, one of the first things we did when we got here was to buy a car. Sounds like a pretty straightforward thing, right? Well, we found a demo car advertised. It was slightly used, but still pretty new and still had a warranty and it was being sold through a dealership. It's in our price range and we bought it. Drove it, great car. Drove it to Paris. The first year, Draghi went to renew the tag. They told him that we didn't own the car. The car was still attached to a lease agreement. Hmm, how could that be? Well, we went back to the dealer and yes, it was part of a fleet lease agreement. And by the way, the lease had three more years. So for the next three years, the dealer had to process the tag and insurance renewals for us. Crazy business practices. Selling a car that doesn't have a clear title. And we also since learned that the insurance was, pro since the insurance was processed through the dealership, if we'd had a major accident, we would have gotten nothing. However, follow Bogue, another, a happy ending. Everything worked out. Seven years later, the car is still in good condition and we now register and insure it ourselves. Drive does, of course. Well, the next thing is just a little thing, but Applying for residency was a little more complex of a process than I imagined. And I hadn't done enough research before we left. Unfortunately, I had not brought with us the appropriate form of our marriage license. So I not only had to request from America a certified copy of our license, I also had to get an apostille from the state of Florida to certify it was valid. We then had to register our marriage here in Deliblato, and they then issued the document that we needed for residency. And that document is only valid for six months. I guess it's true that marriage is not, all, not always forever, but the document isn't free either. Then we had to have all of the documents translated by a certified translator, and we had to purchase insurance, submit the papers, and wait for it to be processed. The first year they put the residency sticker in my passport. Wow, sure felt so official. But they forgot to write my residency number on the sticker. I didn't have any problems because of it, but I imagine I could have if something had come up, but we didn't. We had to complete the application process every year for four years and on the fourth year, I got my permanent residency in Elite Nakarta. Boy, did that feel good. Also learned another interesting thing. We decided to purchase a plot of land that was adjacent to ours. And the house on that plot of land was not legalized. And so it wasn't considered a residency. And since I'm not a Serbian citizen, I couldn't be included on that property deed. So it's Draghi's property. But the more confusing part of that is I can inherit the property. I just couldn't be on the deed when he bought it. Crazy. 
So yes, before I came to Serbia and visited Serbia, I knew there had been some negative interactions between U.S. and Yugoslavia. And in my visits here, I um, did not experience any animosity towards me or America. But doesn't it figure, in the end, I ended up living next door to a gentleman who has a lingering resentment. We employed him and his son to help with some of the construction and finishing work on our house. And as soon as it was complete, he quit talking to us. He has since given us some grief for painting our side of his wall and then again sent me a letter advising that he wants us to tear down our garage and upstairs apartment because it infringes on his peace. In that letter, he told me um, I carried the blame for the reason that he had to leave Croatia, his home, in 1999. Not quite sure how I did that. but. Aside from the uncomfortable air, there aren't any other issues caused by that. But it's still kind of uncomfortable to know your neighbor doesn't like you. Ah, uh, now, there was the time that the bank machine at the shopping center kept my bank card. I say ate my bank card, but kept my card when I was making a withdrawal. And no, this doesn't really sound like the end of the world. But trust me, at that time, it was our only means for withdrawing bank funds. And the biggest trick was that a bank account in my name only. So when it came to trying to work with the bank here in Serbia, Draghi couldn't really help me because it wasn't his bank card. So um, I called the Serbian bank. They told me which location the bank card would be. And I had to go there. Remember, I don't speak a lot of Serbian. Follow both. Thank God I did manage to find a bank employee who spoke English on the first visit, but she advised me that they could not give me back my card without a documentation from my bank saying it was valid. They wanted my bank to fax them the document. So I called my U.S. bank. I asked them, nope, they couldn't do that. Well, after two days of calling every possible place in America I could find, I found somebody who um, agreed that it would be very difficult to issue me a new card. And um, she would email something. I got the Serbian bank to accept an email. And yes, another happy ending, but not without a lot of pleading on my part. And the last issue I'm gonna talk about today. This is about electronics in Serbia. So, as compared to America, they are expensive. Most times the comparison of prices is at least a third, if not a half again as much, sometimes even more. And in most cases, in the places outside of Belgrade where we do our shopping, they are older technology. So my lesson learned, when possible, buy them when I travel to America. But there is then the issue of paying duties when you come back. Sometimes I've gotten lucky, other times not so lucky. However, we did finally um, succumb to the need and we bought a new Samsung telephone for me. Great telephone, great camera. Well, after about 18 months of use, it quit fast charging. Still slow charged. Um, and I was concerned that if, it, if that part of the charging broke, then the rest of it would quit charging altogether. And it was still under warranty, so we decided to take it back to the store for repair. Took it back in November, end of November. They told us it would take up to 30 days. Now here's the crazy part. They also told us, you're going to get a text that says we won't repair it. But just ignore that one, because you'll get another one that says it will be repaired. So it was getting close to Christmas. After 25 days, we hadn't heard anything. We decided to go and check on it. As expected, they said, not yet. Wait, another week. Well, because it was all the Christmas holiday and New Year's stuff, you know, we waited a little bit longer than that and went sometime in the middle of January to check on it. Uh, no, it's been lost. Come back tomorrow. We think it's been lost. Come back tomorrow. Came back the next day. Yes, it was lost. They didn't have my telephone. 
So they said, select another phone. You can, will replace this with something of lesser value, or you can pay the difference if you choose a more expensive one. So I found one that I liked that was a little more expensive, but they didn't have that one. They would order it for me. A week later, we go back and they still don't have it. A few days later, they call us and say the phone they got was a demo model and they could not get it unlocked. But there was another one in the warehouse and they'd order that one. Five days later, we went to check on it. Still not there. Okay, that was Friday. We said, okay, we'll wait till Monday. So another five days, four or five days. Nope, went back, still not there. The sad part is, is that not one time while we were at the store, did they apologize? Did they regret that we'd been inconvenienced? It was like we were kind of inconveniencing them by bothering them. But anyway, so we decided to try um, to find a different model, find one that they had. So I picked one, asked the clerk if they had it, said, immediately said no. Luckily, my husband saw a manager whom he had talked to before about some of our issues, and she checked with another employee, and yes, they did have it. So from November 22nd to February 8th, I was without a telephone. Yes, it's important to buy things with warranties, but not from this store. From my experiences in America, warranties would never be handled like this. Most times, they would just replace the item the first time you brought it in. We bought all of our home appliances and more from this store, so I never imagined having this experience. I will not mention the name of the store, but I assure you, we will not purchase anything else from them. Of course, none of these incidents are earth-shatteringly devastating, and most have happy endings. And I feel blessed that nothing worse has happened in seven years. I would not change my decision for moving to Serbia, but I will admit that it is time for a change. What's the deal breaker, you ask? For me, one of the most attractive reasons to live here was to travel Europe. And until COVID levels out, travel is too risky for me. But I hope our plans will always include living in Serbia for some months of the year. But as Draghi says, we will see. Thank you for watching. Please leave comments if you have any questions or suggested topics you'd like to hear about. Until next time, Dovidenia.